Hi, window watchers. The reason I'm not at the bulletin board today is this right here. See, today we're going to be talking about music again, and in particular about the piano. So it was kind of hard for me to try and lift the piano up to the bulletin board, so I thought, well, I'd just sit down in front of it, and you really wouldn't care. I hope you don't. Remember, uh, a while ago, we talked about another musical instrument. It was a recorder, remember, and Ed Weiss was here, and he told us about the recorder and how old it was and how to play it. And it was an end-blown flute, remember? And it was what we called a woodwind. And if you remember, too, that same day, we said that there were three kinds of musical instruments. There were woodwinds, there were percussion instruments, which were the drums, and there were stringed instruments, which took in harps and violins and cellos and bass viols and a few other ones, too. So today we're going to be talking about the piano. And Ed Weiss is here again. Come on in, Ed, and sit down. And I see you brought your own piano with you. Well, this is Echo's piano. At least you told me it was. Yes, it is. It's just a toy piano. And that brings me to a, a question that I wanted to ask you. Now, this kind of piano here that I'm sitting mm -hmm. in front of, this is kind of a little short one. It would, it's not very wide, I suppose about a yard wide, and it's not very tall. No, that's right. What that's kind of a piano do we call it? Oh, this? that's called a spinet nowadays. A spinet? Mm-hmm. Well, I guess I couldn't say they got the word spinet from a spinning wheel because it doesn't look like a spinning no, wheel. No, back in the old days there was a type of musical instrument. It had strings on it and a keyboard. It was called a spinet too. Strings were, were plucked instead of hit with a hammer. But uh, the idea of a spinet piano was not a new one. But it's a small piano. Well, I'm talking about pianos in, in general before we come back to this one Can again. Can I put this on the ground? Oh, I'll hold it for oh, you. All right. Um, how old are pianos? Now, when we were talking oh. about flutes the last time, we said they went back so many, several hundred thousand mm -hmm. years. Well, how far back can we trace a piano? Well, probably the idea of the piano can go way, way, way back. Uh, you heard of a, a zither? A zither? Mm -hmm. you, you strike this with, uh, with hammers. Oh, you know, you, you a just like strings, drum hammers. Mm -hmm. Stretched over uh, some sort of a frame, a group of wire strings, uh -huh. and you hit it. Mm -hmm. Well, this is like a piano. The difference is, of course, you just hold two hammers in the hands. With a piano, each string has its own mechanical hammer, which cups up and strikes uh -huh. the string. Now, that sort of action, as the piano is called, the hammer striking the strings mechanically, oh, this probably can go back to maybe about, oh, 1580 or even before that. 1580. If I think of somebody that lived... Well, how about um, Christopher Columbus discovering America, 1492? Well, that's just about hits it, doesn't it? Well, this would be about 100 years later than the discovery of America. I see. Well, that's quite old then, isn't it? Yes. Well, now, this one here, it's a little bit different shape from this one that I'm sitting in front of. We said this was a spinet, and what do you call this? Well, now, let's suppose that this were a real, real true piano. A real, yeah, real and true piano. And this would be, oh, could be a concert grand piano, which is somewhere around eight feet long. Very, very long. Now, the keyboard, of course, isn't, um, <laughs> isn't the same on a regular piano as it is on no. this play one. But let's put this down here and look right. at the shape of it. In other words... This is the main shape. The difference is that it has this, um, oh, kind of an S-curve like Yes, here. this is something like you would find a harp, see? Uh -huh. And harps are very old instruments. And the long strings, the ones that are for the bass notes, these are in the long portion, and the little tiny strings that are for the high notes are in the shorter portion. Well, now, since this is just a toy, I know that there aren't strings in it, but there no, are... Well, iron rods, and it looks like it might be the same idea. Here, these rods are shorter, and these rods are longer. And the longer rods have a lower tone than the higher one. Which has oh, a higher pitch. Oh, the little pitch, short ones are very mm -hmm. high, and the longer ones are lower. Mm -hmm. Well, then there are the concert grands that are shaped like this only. Yeah, and then the various sized grand pianos, or they call them, some of them apartment grands. And baby grands. And baby no, grands. These, the baby these grand. are... are I have a, a size relationship. Some are shorter than others. Mm -hmm. Some are longer. Well, now, getting to um, the stringed instrument part, mm -hmm. it is a stringed instrument. Yes. But why is it a stringed instrument? I mean, where are the strings? Now, when I look here at this piano, I know that when I just play, I hit these, these keys yes. right mm -hmm. here. Well, now, is this string right down under no. the key here? No, the string is, is way back in here. Way back in here. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. 
Now, uh, we could open this top and we look down inside. We find that the, the strings go down this way, you see. And then there is a hammer like this that hits the string. You strike the key. Now, wait a minute. You've got me all confused. All right. And I know that there's another piano over here that's all torn apart that we can see the inside of. So let's just stop right now and start over with this, all right. with this string business. Well, now, this is what you probably would call an old-fashioned piano because they really don't make these anymore. This is an upright piano and they were very popular many years ago because they're smaller outside of this type. Um, they are smaller and can easily be stuck into a corner. Uh -huh. You couldn't do this with a concert grand piano which would have to be sticking out and probably take up most of your room. See? Well then this one really did have a case on it too. Didn't oh yes, we, I mean we, well I wouldn't say we chopped the front off, we sort of pulled it off. Just unscrewed it. <laughs> That's right. Well, all right, now, now that I can see the inside and what it looks like, uh, why don't you do some explaining? Well, let me pull one of these keys off. Now, this is a piano key. This is covered with ivory. Some pianos use a plastic covering nowadays, but this is covered with ivory. And there is a hole here and a hole here. Uh -huh. A metal pin goes right up through here and one through here so that the key will be held in the same position. And now I use my finger and the key will pivot back and forth. And I press my finger here and the back goes up. And I release it and the spring pushes the key up to normal position. So it's this sort of movement. Now at the back of the key is this little tiny piece of metal which comes into contact with another piece of wood that is, we'll call it the we'll piano it, action. It, right. That's right. That comes into contact with the hammer. And when you press this, this sends the hammer toward the string and it strikes the string. Oh, I see. Well, we ought to be able to see that work fairly well. Well, I think on you hand, can pretty you well. So? Now, now, wait a minute. Are these the hammers? These up here? are the hammers right up here. Uh huh. Now, I think we can get a better look at those shortly. These are the hammers right up here. And as I press the key, the hammers are sent towards the string. Now this piano is old and uh, very out much of out of tune. As a matter of fact, the tuner left his signature and label there, 1912. <laughs> but this is just for purposes of explanation. <laughs> Hammers yeah. do come up That's and right. hit it. Now, well, now, you see what happens here. This piece of wood is raised when you press the key. You start here, you press the key, like this, see? Down it goes, and it's a pivot sort of affair. And what it does now is raise this one back here. See? And this is attached to the action, which pushes the key, or rather pushes the hammer, right towards the string. Okay. Now the hammer is not made of metal or anything like that. It's really a small piece of wood covered with heavy felt. Now I think that's... I can pull this away. I hope it doesn't fall apart. It may. It goes in there. Down it comes. Can you lower your end just a little bit more? All right. There's a key step. Oh, all right. There we are. Now I think you can see this just a little bit better. This is a hammer. Now you can see them more easily. Mm -hmm. These see? are the hammers. This is These hammer. are the hammers. And we That's push right. the key. And you see how they move up and if the, the string is here, they hit the string just like that. See? Uh -huh. Hit it good and hard or soft depending upon how you press. All down the line. Notice the bigger strings, lower tones are at this end of the piano and the hammers there are bigger and heavier because the strings are longer and thicker. Oh, this yeah, end, these are just little tiny These are little hammers. tiny ones, you see? And these strings are little tiny strings. Oh, now, wait a minute. This is, this, can I do that, too? All right, I go ahead. I won't hurt try. this piano, will I? No, you take that one, I'll take it here. All right, now, these are very short strings, and mm -hmm. they're great big fat ones down mm -hmm. there. Let's see what happens. Well, mine's much higher than yours. Now, I would not recommend anybody doing this with a good piano that he has in, in his home, because moisture from the fingers will get on the strings if you do that and might cause them to rust oh. and injure them. You oh. should never touch the inside of the piano with your hands. Well, of course, really, I don't think anybody would want to take their piano apart well, to I look at not. it like this, either. But there's one other portion we forgot about. You notice when you do this on the strings, you get a sound. Uh -huh. 
and they keep vibrating, they keep sending out this tone. Well, now this is all right if you want that effect, but most often you want to strike just one note at a time. So when the hammer strikes the string, the string will vibrate, and then when the hammer falls back and you're through with that tone, you want to stop it from vibrating. So there are little pieces of felt here called dampers, and they come against the string and keep it from vibrating. Now, this finger will be, let's pretend, this, fi this finger is the damper, and this finger is going to be the string. All right. Now, as I press the key, the damper comes away from the string, and the hammer strikes it, and then I release the key, and the damper comes into place and stops the key from vibrating. Well, what the damper is for, then, is just like taking two big kitchen um, lids to pots mm -hmm. and pans, and you take them, you clang them together, and That's they'll right. just keep going clang until you take a hold That's of them. That's right. And then taking a hold of a ringing uh, tin lid would be the same mm -hmm. thing as this damper That's quieting right. down That's just right. like your that. Hand you see, just like doing this, and you stop it, you see? Oh, it just stops them from moving back mm -hmm. and forth. Right. Well, is that what makes the tone? Well, what do you mean, makes the tone? Well, now, this is just a piece of wire back here, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. And then if I would take my finger and pull it like that, mm -hmm. now, is it wiggling back and forth so fast well, that it's yes. making a noise? Well, yes. It's vibrating so rapidly that it gives you this sound. Notice here that the strings at the top end of the scale, the high-pitched strings, the highest sound, are thin and short, while those that go way down here and give you the bass are long and thicker, see? Uh -huh. well, so the longer the string and thicker, the deeper will be the tone, oh, or the sound of the pitch. Almost on the same principle as your flute. The longer the flute, the lower the tone. Isn't yes, that right? that's true. So extent. the longer the string, the lower the tone. Mm -hmm. Well, now is an upright piano like this, with the strings running up and down, better than a uh, baby grand or one with the strings running no, horizontally? No, uh, a grand pi piano, um, and we're not even discussing makes of pianos. No, <laughs> a grand piano would be better than uh, this. Let me see if I can push this up first of all. This is so very old. It makes a lovely noise, doesn't it? Uh, an upright piano or a spinet piano would not be as desirable as a grand piano because the grand piano is longer and the bass strings can then be longer and less thick in order to get the same type of string on a tone on this sort of piano or a spinet, the strings will be shorter uh, and thicker. The longer the better. Well, we've had a wind instrument and a string instrument. Now, we'll have to try percussion next time. Goodbye.